Our book today is Microtrends Squared by Mark Penn. Uh, the first chapter, The Building Blocks of Change Today, The Power of Microtrends. We live in a microtrends world. It's driven by granular, often opposite patterns of human behavior that seem small but punch above their size. We've identified these powerful patterns as microtrends, and the world is full of them. Together, they are the dots of a global impressionist painting that comes to life when you step back and look at it holistically. These forces have only become more impactful in recent years, and they've started to upend society. Ten years ago, when I first identified these patterns and change in microtrends, I saw a world of boundless opportunities. I was over-the-top optimistic about how microtrends would produce a new world of personalized products on our shelf, and how in Washington they would produce an even greater selection of fresh, first-rate political choices. Of course, that's not exactly what happened. Instead, the information age has given away to the disinformation age in which fake information abounds. The nation founded on free speech is grappling with how to live with free speech in the era of the internet troll. The optimism around our economy faded with the unexpected crash of 2008, followed by a historically slow recovery over a decade. Only now is it recovering. Unparalleled consumer choice is leading not to the growth of more startups, but to the dominance of just a few internet companies which are amassing more and more power on the basis of data gleaned from willing but unknowing consumers. And the older generations who in their youth, in their own youth, led a rebellion, have now dug in their heels against the politics and culture of today's new generations. What makes the microtrend such a powerful tool in this moment is that it can unpack and explain changes that we're seeing that otherwise make no sense. On the surface, for example, the middle class can seem to be shrinking, and this is alarming. But it is only by digging deeper and seeing that education is driving more people into the upper classes that we can come to understand these overall statistics at a more molecular level. Often, two diametrically opposed trends are occurring at the same time, which would be invisible in the averages, but which leap out when understood as the result of a cauldron of microtrends. Today in politics, for example, there is no overall, overall ideological shift. Instead, one group of moderate moderates became more conservative and another group became more liberal, causing society to become both more liberal and more conservative at the same time, essentially canceling each other out. This increased polarization then produces even more gridlock and confusion. We can see similar tugs and pulls throughout society. While one group seeks more technology, another one wants to sit in the Amtrak quiet car. Some can't sit through a six-second commercial. Others spend hours and hours binge-watching TV. Some live in a world of globalization, while others yearn for a return to greater nationalism. To explain all this, we've borrowed from Newtonian physics. For every trend, there is a counter-trend. It's human nature in the information age. Every move or desire in one direction seems to inspire a counter-move by another group in the opposite direction. For every radical group, there's a new conservative group. For every new product in mobile technology, there are those sticking to the flip phone. Only by understanding the complexity of these developments can we make sense of a world that seems senseless, confused, and even jumbled. While in 20, 2007, microtrends allowed you to navigate the changes of the day, new, now microtrends squared lets you better understand the emerging chaos as the seesawing of opposite forces fighting for dominance in the social, political, and cultural worlds. In the last decade, technology was able to exploit and even conquer the world of microtrends, with its ability to customize products and our lives based on AI and big data. But even as these attempts have transformed our lifestyles, they've also led to some serious unintended consequences that have further clouded society. Microtrends dis disentangles many of these shifts and lies at the source of many battles for power that have disrupted our world today. As you'll see throughout this book, those ongoing battles will result in some very unlikely winners, losers, and shifts in the overall power match of society. While the technology behind increased personalization of goods and services has been providing us with more choice in our daily life, we've instead been making fewer choices, burrowing into comfortable silos. 
We expected that the advances in our ability to customize goods and services would open us all up to a new world of never-ending experimentation. A decade later, exactly the opposite has occurred, and our society has become increasingly polarized with people finding choices they like and picking them over and over again. In 2007, microtrends explained how the Starbucks economy had succeeded the Ford economy. In the Ford economy, you could have any color you wanted as long as it was black. The aim of industry was to mass produce products at the lowest possible cost, and that meant standardization of goods. But the new economy of the 21st century was moving starkly away from that model, instead providing consumers with any color they wanted. The Starbucks economy was based on creating greater value through customization, even of simple products like coffee and tea. People everywhere became more individualistic in their tastes and were rebelling from carefully mowed lawns and white picket fences. The marketplace responded to these trends by allowing people to have it their own way, and they did. The theory was that more choice would result in a happier and more satisfied group of consumers. Variety would open consumers up to new experiences, in many ways bringing us closer together, allowing to, us to mix, match, and try out all sorts of new options. Yeah. Something rather surprising happened, however, as consumers got more, ch more choice. The book Microtrends Squared. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry.